Okay, so the last video I mentioned that one of the benefits of rather than typing directly into a field from your table, that you have this intermediary field and that the value gets typed in here and that you can then check that value, maybe make some modifications, ensure data integrity, and then that modified value gets put into your table. So let's take a look at why you'd want to do this. Say just, you know, people make mistakes, humans are doing the data entry, Say they put in a bunch of extra spaces and then they type in and they put in some more extra spaces and then they add the record. You go to your table and see it's totally wrong. If this is being printed up, say maybe this is a name field for a person, it's going to make it look terrible because their name isn't properly aligned, things like that. And so you have these extra blank spaces in this in this field that you don't want. You want this value to be modified. So let's take a look at how that can be done. So first we'll delete this. Yes, we want to delete that. We'll close the table. And we open our form again. Now if you recall that when you click on this button, that's when the data is taken from this field and put into the table. That is where we want to enforce the control. So we'll go up to view and go down to design view. And so we're not actually going to be, we're not going to apply it here. We're going to go here because this is where the functionality is occurring. So when you click on the button, and again, the property sheet will come up for whatever you're clicked on. If you have the form clicked on, it's one set of properties. If you have a field clicked on, it's a different set of properties. We're going to be looking at the button. We already have our event procedure from last time, and we're going to build on that. So we're going to click on the ellipsis, and what we're going to do is, if you recall, this is saying take the text field that is on this form. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to drag and drop. We're going to take that text field and put it into this field on the table. So that means this is the side that needs a modification. There's something called trim. So you're just taking what we had there, putting it into parentheses next to the word trim. So it's saying trim this field or trim the value within this field to be more exact. So watch what happens. We save this. We close this. Let's save our form. And now let's do exactly the same thing. Going to put in a bunch of spaces, type in the word test, add record. And now we open the table to check that value. And this time you do not have the leading spaces. The leading spaces were trimmed. So just like that, you've begun to enforce some data integrity rules. And then it's just building on that for whatever rule you're looking to enforce. So let's go back and clean up the form a little bit more. Let's delete that record since we don't need it. We'll close the table, go back to the form, go to view and go to design view. So originally we started with the collectible. So go to add field and there's collectible up there. Let's add cost. So we're just gonna drag and drop this here. We're gonna get rid of the label that comes along with it. And now we're going to add another field, again, so that you could type into it and make changes to it, enforce data integrity before it gets entered into your table. So let's go to the text box. Move the label, and again, you grab the upper left corner if you want to move just part of it, if you don't want to move the uh, control itself if you want to move just the label. So we'll call this one cost. And once again, this label does not change the name of this object and doesn't even change the name of this. As you'll notice that this is still called label eight. It's just it's displaying a text field of cost. So this is going to be the cost. And so that means that this value needs to get put into here when we click on add record. So let's save our work, click on add record. 
go back to our event procedure. And then what's going to happen is just as this occurs, we're going to have a similar event occur. So we want text 7 to have its value put into cost. So text 7 put into cost. So me dot cost is equal to me dot text 7. And I don't think I'm going to add all the values because at a certain point it becomes rinse and repeat. You see the process a few times. It's just repeating that process with the remaining fields. So we'll save that. We'll close that. Save our form. Go to view. And as you can see, the new value is here. But this is visible. We don't want it to be. So sorry about that. Go back to design view. It's already selected. Format, visible, no. Let's try that again. So we save it, view. So it's not there, so collectible would be whatever, another movie. And the cost is, we'll say, 500. And then we do add record. So we go to our table, and sure enough, it is indeed being captured. And since this column, this uh, field already has the formatting of dollars, they don't need to enter dollars. So that is the next point I want to bring up. In addition to controls to make a modification to a value entered into a field, you also can give tooltips and hints and instructions to the user and it's pretty easy so we'll close this and we're going to go back to our form back to view back to design view and what we're going to do is we're going to click on this field we're going to go to other and in other, you'll see a few things such as name, label name. So again, one is the name of the object that you're typing into. This is the label that goes along with it. And we're going to come down here to control tip text. What this is, is this is like a hover box. And that is when you point and you hover and you wait a little tooltip will appear that gives instructions. So there's kind of a weakness there that people have to have the presence of mind to hover over a box. So we might add another instructional field at the bottom of the form that says, for help, hover mouse over field, that kind of thing. So control tip, do not enter dollar sign or decimal. Or you could say enter number only uh, numbers only, that kind of thing. Okay? So we save. We go back to view. Watch what happens. I point at this and there we go. So it takes about I don't know, maybe 1 or 2 seconds, but now that easily, you are now given instructions to your end user. So let's go ahead and do what we said. We'll click on View, click on Design View, and at the bottom here, we're going to add a label since we don't need it to really function. And just put this here. And this is just a free edit field, just like uh, this one at the top, I believe, was a label as well. So we're just going to put in maybe something like a couple asterisks to get people's attention and say hover over a field for quick help. Something like that. A couple more asterisks. And you have to be careful just how much information you give to people at any one time. 
And by the way, I, I was just shrinking that. I just pointed at the dot on the left, on the right side, and just shrunk it in. Just makes it easier to center. That's all. And again, there are tools for centering. I just don't want to go into that right now. So we'll save this again. View. And so now you have the instructions here. Hover over a field for quick help. You hover over cost. Do not enter dollar sign or decimal. Okay, I think that's just about it for this video. I don't want to go through too much. Obviously, again, like I said, the layout of this is terrible. These things really aren't centered right and things like that. Like collectible really isn't centered over the box. Little things like that. And it really, it's amazing how much extra work you have to put in just to make things look a little bit better. So I tend to do that at the end. I try to get the functionality in place, and then I start doing the the actual layout as far as how I want it to look. I have a basic idea, but until you know exactly what's in the form, you don't want to get too in-depth with the layout, because then you may, may turns out you need to add extra things to the form, and now you have to change the layout. But I think that should do it for about now. So we've reviewed how to... At a tooltip, when you point at a uh, box, it won't show in now because it's a design view. And we showed a rudimentary enforcement of data integrity. So both would give instructions to people about what to enter, and if they enter something wrong, how to intervene with that. There's other things we could do. You could just stop and, and, and say this value is not allowed, but uh, we'll get into that later. And you have to be very careful about that because... Certainly, if something is completely wrong, you don't want garbage to, to be entered into your database. But you have to be careful about um, how stringent you are with that because you, you still want the system to be usable. So sometimes you can meet the user halfway. Like I said, if they hit a few spaces rather than saying, eh, sorry, you can't enter spaces, it's like, you know something? We've got this. We can get rid of the spaces for you, you know, and, and, and move along. So I think that's about it for now. I plan on doing maybe two or three more videos uh, for this portion. And then we'll pause and see if there's anything else people want. Because at that point, we'll have covered tables, queries, reports, forms, uh, as well as Visual Basic. So that is an awful lot. That's really the core functionality. And at that point, it's just kind of self-study where uh, you do research to see what other commands can be done. I have another uh, another entire series on this channel already. Uh, the audio isn't so good in the first couple of videos. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to re-record. And I also did things in a slightly different order, too. I did forms like the second video in that series of the third video. So I really wanted to cover all the different objects and then show how forms can interact with that. So at the moment, we've really only shown how a form can be used for the data entry. Uh, the forms can still be used for queries, so that will be a video, at least one, uh, and how forms can work with reports. And again, like I said, for reports, uh, reports are a valid, legitimate part of the database, but I think it's really best for internal database use only, that it's not the kind of thing you want to use to send out to people. So I think it's great for a good snapshot, like how many cases were entered today or things like that. So I find reports good really for monitoring and maintaining the database itself as opposed to necessarily uh, be something that then gets exported and distributed externally because, as I said, there's lots of formatting issues and I won't even get into it on, on this video. So that should uh, do it uh, for now.